Hey everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner-operator of Actually Diet Art by Science, and this is the last video that we're going to do for the carting process for your for your Fleester project. Um, this is the bat that we made in the last video where we divide up all the bats and then we have what we had and put it through the drum carter to make sure that everything was nicely blended, the colors and the textures were nicely blended, and this is the bat that we resulted with. Now I'm going to do a little bit of Hollywood video magic because I have not finished making these um, into bats as well, but that's okay because I know when I did all my division that I had six of these. So we have five, I have five that I have left to do which means that I have six total bats to work with. So when I set up for this project, what I'm going to do is anything that I add to one, I'm going to add to the other in equal parts. So this is some lovely coppery merino that I dyed a few years ago now. Um, I think when I was getting ready to move to Korea, I decided this would be a brilliant idea to dye everything that I could to use up all the dye solutions I had previously prepared. And um, it was a brilliant idea, but unfortunately I still don't have enough. <laughs> I really love this color and I wish I dyed, dyed more of it, but you know, this sometimes happens, right? So it's um, kind of like a burnt brown copper color. And now I put this through the drum carter once. This was combed top, so it was already really well processed before I dyed it. So this didn't really need a lot of effort on the part of the drum carter. So I just put it in there to make it nice and fluffy. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide this in half, and then we're going to divide this in thirds. Now, if you want to be really, really specific, you can weigh all of your ingredients. For me, I like... I like there to be some kind of consistency, but I'm not over the top with making sure everything is perfect. Um, when I first started, I was, and that was probably just because I was very new to everything, and if you feel more confident knowing how much everything weighs, then by all means, weigh everything out. And I'm just going to wrap these up into um, smaller bundles so that I don't have a mess here on my table. Now, um, I picked this color, well I picked, I picked this color actually based on what I was thinking about uh, for my next shrug. My first shrug is kind of neutral, it is um, white and brown with a little bit of Angelina mixed in. So it's mostly neutral, and I'm fine with it being mostly neutral. but. As anything in your wardrobe, you want to mix neutrals with non-neutrals because the non-neutrals is what it's what gives the wardrobe its pizzazz. It's what makes you feel good wearing some of your clothes, right? So oh, I got a little bit of fiber there. <laughs> Everyone saw that, right? So um, I was thinking red, and this was the piece of fabric that I had initially picked out for the bow that goes around the top which ties the shrug and keeps it on the shoulder. And um, this is 100% silk, came from India. And what I love about it is that it has lots of really great colors. Now I haven't washed it or ironed it or anything, but you can kind of maybe see it's striped. Stripes are going this way. And there's dark orange, red orange, a little bit of a gold color in there, copper, and um, I really like this the deep saturated look that this gives. So in order to prevent it from becoming too heavy, you know, too, like, like when you mix and match colors of a similar color family, like if you have reds, you want to pick reds that are more dissimilar so that certain aspects of it pop more than others. So that's why I picked sort of this, this um, really light cranberry color because I knew I was going to be blending it with something like this, and I'll show you what else I'm going to blend it with, just to add some 
with some color variation so that it wasn't all dark red coppery tones. I feel like there's a reason for my madness. <laughs> anyway, so here is the color that I'm going to blend this with. Now I have some other good goodies to show you. First thing I'm going to show you, these little teeny bits of silk. Now I think this is silk that I dyed about two, two or three years ago. This is sort of a reddish orange silk and this is just a beautiful goldish yellow color. Now it's going to be fun dividing this into sixths, but that's what I'm going to have to do. And for something like this, it might make sense to weigh it a little bit so that I can get approximate amounts. But I really like the random element that um, these little accent colors will provide in the finished yarn. You want to be um, original. You don't want this to look like a commercial yarn, right? So if it's a little too uniform, it's going to look like it was manufactured and not handmade. Now this bundle looks a little big, so I'm going to add some of it to this other bundle here. You can eyeball it. That's totally fine. I mean, these are such small amounts that I don't even know if the scale would really help much. Just leave them like this. And then this bundle is even smaller. <laughs> but what this will provide are these little streaks of color within the bat. Now when I put this in I'm only going to card it once all together and when I spin it that will be that. I won't I won't do any extra blending. This stage is really just to incorporate these little extras that I'm putting into the yarn. Okay. And then this is some um, yellow, like very canary yellow <laughs> um, nylon fiber. Uh, it's called Icicle. And um, this is, I may not use all of this, but basically it is um, a man made fiber that gives a little bit of shine and shimmer. And when you incorporate it, incorporate it into these bats, it's not going to be overpowering at all. It's just going to be enough to add some shine and um, give it some dimensionality. Okay, so that was all the little bundles of things that I had. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take these little add-ins, roll them up like this, so they're self-contained. And I'm going to put them all with their respective future bats. So it's going to be like a, a mixer party. They're all going to sit here and get to know each other before they get incorporated together. It's good to be friends beforehand. All right. Now I have all of the fibers sort of divided. Now. What I'm not going to divide are these fibers. These are Angelina fibers. They're very shiny, shimmery, metallic fibers. I've talked about these in previous videos. This is red, then we have some gold, and then we also have some copper. I'm just going to add a little pinch here and there. I'll talk about how big my pinches are when I actually um, get started. And then I have here some sari silk because this stuff, you get a little bit and this stuff seems to last forever. <laughs> um, I think I have eight ounces. I had eight ounces in the start and now I have, I don't know, maybe six ounces left and I use this a ton. It goes like in everything that I make. Um, but it's really soft fiber. It's, re it's recycled. It gives jobs to women in India. So I really support, I really support that. And, I mean, look at all these crazy colors, and it adds a lot of texture because um, parts of it are nice and fluffy, but parts of it aren't. They're more like um, threads, so it's a nice contrast in texture. Now, with this, you can kind of see there's some golds and yellows and reds 
already mixed in, but then there are some things like blue. So when you add a little bit to each of these bats, what it's going to do is it's going to add sort of like a tweed effect where it's going to be all of a sudden, whoop, there's a different color. And it adds more visual interest and makes it less like everything else you might see at the department store. It adds that creative value. So with this, I mean, I could portion this out, but I really won't um, because it's, to me, I use it very much like I would the Angelina, just a pinch here, a pinch there. Now comes the complicated part. In this, there are some black threads every once in a while, and I haven't quite decided if I should add black to this mixture. The reason why I say that is because we've already got a lot of these fibers, and then we're already incorporating these fibers. Usually, I only like to stay in a family of three or four additional colors besides the main one because um, it's a nice, safe ground. If you're new to exploring with color, if you are a beginner, if this is the first time you've really used a drum carter, um, you, you may feel intimidated by putting everything under the sun into your bat. Plus, it also adds bulk and weight and... Um, you know, that can, it can get sort of unruly on the drum carter if your bats are already a little bit too big. So you have to go through a bunch of other steps. So I'm still kind of on the fence. This is just black um, icicle. It's not quite as shiny as the yellow stuff that I showed you, but um, it does have a little bit of shimmer and it's really soft. Still don't know if it's quite what I want in this um, calorie, but we'll see as we make it. So, anyway, this is going to be a two part video because, as I can see, this is already more than 10 minutes. So, basically, what you're going to do for prep is make all your bats, divide up all the fiber add ins that you want for each bat. And if it's going to be a little while before you get to do the whole project, you know, you can put these into uh, Ziploc bags, you know, reuse things or paper bags, just anything to kind of keep it separate while you work, um, just so that things don't get crazy and chaotic, shift it around, um, because these smaller fibers will tend to shed on everything. <laughs> Anyway, and if you if it's been a long time, you can also take notes. This is a good time to take notes. Anyway, so get your whole get your whole thing set up for the way that you want all of the bats processed, so that they'll all come out relatively the same. And in this next video, we'll actually talk about how to put them on the drum carter, and some you know ideas for how to vary that a little bit to create different effects. Anyway, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, and you can put your questions or comments below. If there's anything that um, I missed, or if you want me to talk about in depth, you know, you can also let me know. You can email me. I'll get back to your email and offer greater explanation for all this. Um, you can also find me on Facebook and find me on Twitter if you just want to see what I'm doing. And then you can also find me on my blog which is expertlydyed.blogspot.com and I'll post a lot of these kinds of tutorials and I'll also post um, some other things that I'm working on, even even things not necessarily related to Expertly Dyed, like um, um, I've been posting reviews from other magazines lately because uh, some really cool magazine really just came out and um, I'm pretty excited about how it's going to affect the spinning community so you can find out more about that there. And um, yeah, so stay tuned for the next video. All right, bye.